This is Audible. A death in the family. Hello, hello, hello. What's happened here then? Oh, thank God, officer. It's my horse. Oh, what's wrong with it? I think he's dead. Well, I'm sorry, sir. We can't have a dead horse blocking up the Queen's Highway. It's rush hour. You'll have to shift him. I can't carry him. Then we'll have to get the abattoir to send a van down, won't we? The abattoir? Oh, yes, yes, I'll, I'll, I'll suppose so. All right, now, can I have your name and address, please, sir? Uh, Harold Steptoe. Yeah. The Muse Cottage. Mm -hmm. Oil Drum Line. Oh, I see. <laughs> and uh, what was the name of the deceased? The de oh, Hercules. <laughs> have you got the street trader's licence? Yeah, I've done it. There's another ten bobs worth of manure for old Mother Butler. <laughs> cool, her matters must be as big as airships, the amount she does. <laughs> no doubt about it, that horse certainly earns his keep. <laughs> Stable's full of it. Not as much as they used to be, though. He's getting very irregular lately. <laughs> he must be getting old, like all of us. Oh, well... I suppose I'd better get Face Ake's dinner ready. Strangers in the night. Da dee 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 dee. Strangers in the night. I've got them on me. Hello, Ted. You're back early. I was just getting your dinner ready. I didn't hear you come in the yard. I wasn't expecting you back till six. Has the horse been put away? Yes. Yes, he's been put away. Well, what have you got his collar hanging around your neck for? Well, don't throw it down there. Aren't you going to clean it? No. Well, it's about time. It's all cracked. You want some saddle soap on that? That horse looks a disgrace. You don't look after him. Oh, please, Dad, don't. Did you notice I cleaned the stables out? And I creosoted it. And I got another two sackfuls you can take round to old Mother Butler. By the way, as he started going in the street, because <laughs> if he has, you can take a bucket round with you and pick it up. <laughs> don't leave it there. We don't want them all nipping out of their gardens and picking it up free of charge, do we? <laughs> It's a nice little byproduct, that is. Pays for his oats. In one end, out the other, and don't cost it. <laughs> That's good economics, that is. That's what you're always spouting about. But it's all talk with you, though, no do. What's the matter with you? You look as if you'd lost two bob and found a tanner. Dad, Dad I, I want to talk to you. Sit down, Dad. I haven't time to sit down. I'm getting the dinner. The, don't worry about the dinner, Dad. I couldn't eat. Please, sit down. I don't want to sit down. Sit down. Oh. Dad. I have asked you to sit down because I have got something to tell you. Oh, go on, then. There comes a time in every man's life when he has to face the prospect of carrying on without the people and the things that he has gathered around him not being there anymore. Where are you going? I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> yeah, you got a bird. You want to clear off and shack up with you, you dirty little toe rag. <laughs> it's got nothing to do with a bird. Oh, I wouldn't leave you, Dad. Not now. What I'm trying to say is that well, none of us is getting any younger. And the time comes when we all have to shuffle off this mortal coil. What? Snuff it, duh. <laughs> I'm not making out no will. Look, I'm, I'm not talking about you. Oh, God. Look, when that time comes, as come it must, to everybody and everything, 
We must face it bravely and carry on the best way we can. Because you see, Dan, we all have to go sometime. It's the law of nature. Nobody can live forever. I know that. Yeah, even in the midst of life, there is death. <laughs> Dad, and we must accept that I fact. No. I, I know you know. But even when you know, you know. When it happens, the shock and the grief can sometimes be too much to bear. That is why we've got to be ready for it. Because it does sometimes happen to somebody close. I've only got you. Are you sure? Yeah. There's, there's only you and... Exactly. The horse. What's wrong with him? Nothing. Well, I'll say nothing. That's not quite true. Why? He's dead. <laughs> dead? It's not true. It's just true. Oh, it was quick, Dad. He didn't suffer. Hercules. Dead? He can't be. He was all right this morning. He had his apple and his little lump of sugar. Oh, no. He really enjoyed that, Dad, didn't he? How? Where? Uh, he had a heart attack. I didn't feel a thing. He went out like a light. We was coming down the gold old road. You were racing him. I was... I wasn't. Honest, I wasn't. I knew you'd say that. Oh, I knew I'd get the blind. He was always racing him. I told you about you racing him. I wasn't racing him. I never raced him. It was hard enough getting him a move. <laughs> he had a heart attack. <coughs> Dead. I didn't race him. I didn't. I was old, Dad. I mean, it was his time to go. Where is he? I took him away. Down the knacker's yard. <laughs> Down the where? The knacker's yard. <laughs> well, where else could I send him? He was blocking the road. I was going to have him buried. A decent Christian funeral <laughs> at the animal cemetery. I had a plot reserved for him. I didn't know that. You never listen, that's why. You only think of yourself. Self, first, last and always. I was going to have... A headstone made and, and little flower pots and an inscription, R.I.P. Instead of which he's going to finish up lying across some plate in a Belgian restaurant. No, no, no he won't be. Look, they only sends live horses out there. Besides, they reckoned he was unfit for human consumption. He was, he was fit for human consumption. <laughs> he wasn't. He was too old. They'd never get their teeth through him. What are they going to do with him? I don't know. Oh, yes, you do. I don't... You do... Cat's meat. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it'll be. Cat's meat. Mm. Stacked up in a supermarket in great piles of tins. Stop it, stop it. <laughs> yeah, with little labels round him. Trial offer, flip and sauce. Mm, stop Save three of these labels for a Freddy and the Dreamers record. <laughs> That's his reward for all them years of loyal oh, service. Oh, stop it, stop it. He should have spent his last years grazing in a sunlit field, smelling the flowers. Instead of that, what does he get? He's dead. Bang him in a tin. Stop it. I only hope he knows what you've done to him. It wasn't my fault. I've never had an horse die before. I, mean, I, I didn't know what to do. I was the police sent for the knackers, Van. You could have said no and brought him home. Ow! Well, what, what, do you, what do you expect me to do? Hang him round my neck and walk home? <laughs> no, I'm not desperate, Dan, mate. <laughs> How much did you get for him? Well, less the cost of a transport. 30 bob. Very appropriate. 30 pieces of silver. I wasn't. That was a quid and a ten bob bit. Here you are. I don't want your blood money. So you can put it towards a new one. A new one? Well, we've got to have another horse, haven't we? Haven't you got no feelings at all? Hercules hardly cold in his tins and you want to go out and buy another <laughs> But we have got to. We can't operate without an horse. But life must go on, Dad. 
I'm as cut up about it as you are. You're not as cut up as the horse is. <laughs> Don't keep on about it, horse. I mean, it's not my fault he died. I mean, God blimey, Dad. He was 41 years old. <laughs> he was older than I am. He was entitled to die. He probably looked forward to it. I mean, if he'd have been a fella, he would have been knocking on 118. <laughs> That's ridiculous, all this fuss. I mean, you don't expect to live to 118, do you? No, I don't. And when I go, I don't want you hanging around. I'd probably wind up the same way as he is. Oh, don't you worry, mate. It wouldn't be worth their while. They'd get all of you in one tin. <laughs> yeah, where, where are you going? Where, where are you going? I'm going down the church. I'm going to say a little prayer to God. So you better give him your name and address, because he won't remember who you are. <laughs> Dinner's on the stove. <laughs> now, now, look, Dad, uh, it is no good sitting around moping like this. I mean, stroking his old horse shoes, that's not going to bring him back, is it? <laughs> Do you realise... He was born on the same day as Princess Margaret. Oh. <laughs> That's what I mean, Dad. Most horses only live to about 20. He's had a good innings. He's the oldest horse I've ever heard of. In fact, I was going to call him Margaret Rose if it had been a bird. Mad, Dad. <laughs> Don't you tell me about horses. Sorry, Dad. He was born in that stable out there. Yes, I know. You told me. Dark night it was, as I remember. Stormy. The vet couldn't get around, and I had to deliver him myself. Yes, Dad. I brought him into the world, and yet I didn't see him going out of it. No, Dad. He should have. He should have got me round, Harold. I would have liked to have a last look at him. Look, I'm, I'm sorry, Dad. I, I didn't think. See, what happens to Saturn? And what with the police there, and the traffic wardens, all the cars, who... And you haggling over the 30 bob. But it wasn't like that. I, I bet you didn't even try the kiss of life. <laughs> the kiss of life? No, I didn't. You'd have to have a mouth like Mick Jagger to give him the kiss of life. Well, you could have tried. Well, I didn't. And I didn't get in touch with Dr Barnard for an heart transplant, neither. <laughs> Very sorry. He had a lovely pedigree. You could trace his ancestors right back to the charge of the Light Brigade. I can't tell lies. His dad pulled a coal cart, and his mum was a threat from United Dairies. Now stop romanticising. Remember this, Rosette? Acton Jim Carner, 1937. Cart horse of the year. And this one, first prize again. Concord's Delegance, 1939. Watney's never got a look in that year. <laughs> I turned down 500 quid for him in those days. Yes, shame. He could have been Gordon Richards' first derby winner. <laughs> and now he's gone. Yeah. Best friend I ever had. Yeah, I know. He was more like a son than a horse. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> He never gave me any grey hairs. He never went out on nights and left me on my own. Oh, God. He never answered me back. He kicked you a few times, though, didn't he? <laughs> oh, honestly, you make me laugh. You, you wouldn't have been carrying on like this if it had been me lying stretched out in Goldhawk Road. You wouldn't have been sitting here with a pair of my shoes on the table and my swimming medals. Then we wouldn't have been shut, neither. I thought there would have been a notice out there, all right. Business as usual. Gone to a funeral. Back in half an hour. <laughs> You won't understand, will you? That horse has been the only company I've had in these last 20 years. You've never bothered about me, going out every night, leaving me here on my own. It was a great comfort to me knowing that he was out there in the stable. I used to go out there at nights and, and sit with him, talking to him. I'm surprised you didn't invite him in here. <laughs> I mean, you could have sat watching the telly together. 
can't just see him sitting back in the armchair with his legs crossed. <laughs> no, watching Panorama with a pint of beer in his own. <laughs> you could have let him have my room and bang me out in the stables. You might just as well. You always looked after him better than me. He had better grub than I did. That's not true. You've always had a meal waiting for you when you come home. Yeah, like that sumptuous feast I had last night. A tin of stewing steak from Zambia. <laughs> oh, Dad, come on. Now, what, what is the point of bickering like this? Oh, I know you was fond of him. Well, so was I. But he's gone. That's all there is to it. You must pull yourself together. Now, I've got the new horse outside. I bought him down at South Hall Market. Do you want to come and see him? No. But he's a lovely horse, Dad. I'd like to have your opinion on him. I'm not interested. Oh, you're only saying, Dad. Once you get used to the idea, you love him. No, I won't. Yes, I will. A keen judge of horse flesh like you. Oh, I really would like you to cast your expert eye over him. I think I got a bargain. It was only 90 quid. <laughs> Can't be much for that. Yeah, well, well, that's what I mean. I'd like you to have a look at him and tell me what you think. Yeah. I mean... Well, you don't know about horses, ain't worth knowing. Oh, that's true. D now, come on, come on, come on. Come and have a look at him. No, I don't want anything to do with him. You bought him, you look after him. All right. <sighs> Did, what do you think I ought to call him? Call him what you like. So long as he don't Hercules. Oh, no, 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 I wouldn't call him Hercules. I mean, there's only one. I mean, there was only one Hercules, wasn't there? I, I, I was thinking of calling him Samson. <laughs> Samson, yeah. Well, I mean, he's a strong horse. They pull a lot of weight. He's 14 ends. Not as big as Hercules. Oh, no, 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 not as big as him. But he's young. He's got a lot of life in him. Good. He'll be company for you. <laughs> Come and have a look at him. No. All oh, right, so you don't like him. I'm not asking you to like him. Just come and have a look at him, professionally. Look, now forget he's an horse. He's an asset. Come and have a look at your new asset. <laughs> Will you like him or not? We've got to have him for the business. I don't care about the business. I've lost interest. I've got a feeling I won't be here much longer. Oh, God, here we go again. <laughs> I shall go and... Join Hercules. I'll be better off up there. There's nothing left me down here. Not now. I'm not needed anymore. I'm only in your way. That's not true, Dad. It is true. You've said it lots of times. That's only when we're having rows. Well, we're always having rows. Only because you keep getting on my tits. <laughs> well, that's it then. Look, Harold. I'm an old man. I'm worn out. When you get to my age, the only thing keeps you going is the thought that somebody needs you. And the only one ever needed me is gone. So there's no point now. Oh, then I'm, that, that is silly, Dad. You are needed. I need you. Samson needs you. Uh, no, you don't. You're both young and healthy. Uh, I can't do anything more for you. I, I, I'm just a useless old twit. Who's lived too long? Oh, Dad, Dad now, don't go. now come back here. Uh, Look, let's talk about it. No, I've said all I'm going to say. You're not going to do anything silly? I'm going to bed. You think about it, Harold. You'll know I'm right. There's your mother, too. I haven't seen her in a long time. <laughs> Good night. Bloody horse. What did you have to dive for? I was going out tonight. <laughs> Dad, I just thought I'd look in to see you again before I go. Oh, look, you haven't touched your breakfast again. That's three days now. You are naughty, naughty. <laughs> You'll fade away. <laughs> we'll have to put a bookmark in the bed to find you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, please, don't move sudden like that, Dad. You'll knock the rose out of the cup. Look, Dad, I mean, you can't go on like this. You've got to eat. 
You haven't eaten anything for three days. Have a sausage, Dad. <laughs> no. I'll cut them on. Put your teeth in and have a bite. <laughs> Get up. Look, you can't stay in bed forever. You'll lose the use of your legs. Please get up. Go away. No, look, look, Dad, I've got to go to work. Well, I'm not stopping you. But I can't leave you like this. Look, I'll tell you what. When I come home tonight, look, we get dressed up. We'll go and eat out, and I'll take you to the pictures. Go away. Yeah, yeah. We'll go and see I Am Curious, Yellow. It's a good film. It's Swedish. <laughs> oh, oh, did I see a little sparkle then, hey? Oh, you'll like that, won't you, hey? I mean, they don't cut away to the faces or the seas rushing in or nothing. Leave me alone. Blimey, it must be ill. <laughs> <laughs> now, look, Dad, you have got to try. You just can't give up. For my sake, Dad. So, here's, here's the newspapers. Cool. Here, look at the size of her. <laughs> Vicar's wife in up pants controversy. <laughs> Bishop investigates. <laughs> turn, turn to page six for full details and pictures. You go on, that'll get you going, go on. Go away. All right, then. I'll tell you what, you have a look in the entertainments column, and if there's anything you fancy, I'll take you to see it. I'll, I'll try and get home early, all right? Oh, no, look, I have got to go to work now, Dan. Do you want me to do your pillows? No, thanks. Is your po empty? <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> Cheerio. <laughs> See you tonight, then, eh? Dad! 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 Dad, come quickly, Dad! Dad! Look what it happened, Dad! Dad! It's Samson! He's ill! He's, 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 he's just lying there! Dad! 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 You've got to help him! Call the vet. He'll be ours! Anyway, you know more than he does. Oh, please, Dad. Come down and have a look at him. He's dying, Dad. I know it. Please, Dad. Don't let him die. Is he sweating? Yeah, yeah. He's pouring off of him. What about his eyes? They're rolling all over his head. <laughs> Have you taken his temperature? Yes. What was he? I don't know, he bit it in half. <laughs> please, please. I don't lie there, Dad. Please, please, Dad. Look, you've just got to do something. Get me bag. Yes, Dad. And, and blankets, lots of blankets. Yes, Dad. <laughs> Not mine, you great pillar. <laughs> Come on. Let's go and have a look at it. Where's me dressing gown? I'm in these bloody cobblestones. Hang on, hang on. I'll go back and get your slippers. No time. Now, you keep outside. I don't need you. You're more of an hindrance than a help. Pull yourself together. Please, don't let him die, God. Please. Not to in one week, please. <laughs> How is he, Dad? Be quiet. I'm busy. Go and make yourself a cup of tea. <laughs> Dad? Dad? Oh, what's happened? Dad? Is he all right? <laughs> you great useless article. What are you? Dad? Dad, he isn't. Come in here. No, no, I don't want to look. I don't want to look. Have a look at that. There's two of them. <laughs> of course there's two of them. He's had a foal. You great pillock. I think I'll call him Samson. Didn't you look at it when you bought it? Yeah. I looked at its teeth and its legs and its hoofs. And when you was down there, didn't you notice nothing missing? <laughs> Nothing. Well, if you're not looking for that sort of thing, you don't know this, do you? 
what about the size of her? Well, I just thought she was well fed, that's all. <laughs> I mean, the man didn't say anything. He must be as daft as you are. Well, <laughs> you got your money's worth, two for the price of one. <laughs> Not a bad little foal, that. He looks just like Hercules did when he was born. <laughs> the mother's not so bad either. Nice, sturdy little horse. <laughs> I've just thought. I better change her name to Delilah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, it's a good job you was here, Dad. I want to know what to do. Ah, oh, well, there you are. You can't be expected to know everything. Uh, what do you think I ought to call the little one? Uh, I, I thought we could call him, uh, Hercules the Second. Oh, oh, that's great, that's great, that's great. Hercules the Second. Oh, come on, come on. Let's go into the house. I'm starving hungry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, here, here. What do you say that name of that film was? Uh... I am curious. Yellow. Oh, I'll have some of that. <laughs> <laughs> you dirty old man, you. <laughs>